Let me start with a question. Who of you has cried this past week? Please raise your hand. And who of you has cried this past month? Or in the past half year? Well, statistically, I should see more hands than this. Because according to research, women cry an average of five times a month, whereas men only cry once. But yes, people, men do cry. But now let me ask you this. How many of you have actually shared their tears or their stories with someone else? My name is Maurice Mickers, and some of you may know me as the tear catcher, because I capture the beauty of tears by photographing them underneath a microscope. Last year, I started the project Imaginarium of Tears, an ongoing photography tear collection with personal stories at its heart. It is because I believe that we should embrace our tears, be they happy or unhappy ones, because they are one of the true expressions of ourselves and your connection to the world. Tears are unique. They are beautiful, and they are art. So, how in the world did I come up with putting tears underneath the microscope? Well, the story began with dyslexia. And as frustrating as it was at school, funnily enough, dyslexia guided me to where I am today. My dislike of words made me excel in the beta subjects such as physics, mathematics, and chemistry. In my free time, I would spend behind a computer. And I would literally spend all my money on new gadgets, instead of on dates which I actually still do. So it did not come as a major surprise that I became a medical laboratory analyst. And while working at the lab, I spent a lot of time looking through the microscope. And to me, wow, it was mesmerizing. The things that were commonly seen as routine, science, or diagnostics, to me, got a whole new dimension, art. But since taking pictures or being creative, was not mentioned in my job description, I decided to exchange my lab coat for a laptop and a camera. I joined the Royal Art Academy in The Hague and became a professional photographer. Now, eight years later, I'm standing here talking about my passion of visualizing stories by using a microscope. I call them micrograph stories. I visualize the everyday things we encounter and consume in our daily life. For example, this is tartaric acid. It's a commonly used food additive. It helps to make your cake rise. And no, this is not a computer render or Photoshop. This is what you would actually see when you look through the microscope. And this, this is diclofenac, a commonly used painkiller. And this one, it is pretty, right? It is MDMA, the active component of ecstasy. And doesn't it almost make you want to start drugs? <laughs> For me, these micrographs function as story starters, since everything I visualize has a hidden story. And my ultimate goal is to create more awareness around the subjects that I visualize. But let's get back to tears. People often ask me, how do you create these images? And why do the tears look like that? And are all tears the same? Well, when I started this project, I really had no clue what a tear would look like underneath a microscope. But one day, I had to cry. I bumped my toe against the table really hard. And man, I feel lucky that I don't have to give birth. So while in pain, <laughs> I captured the tear rolling down my cheek with the pipette, and I got to work. So at that moment, I really had no clue what technique I should use underneath my microscope. So I started with the bright field technique. It's the microscope technique that you commonly use in high school. And afterwards, I tried the polarization technique. But it was only when I was stunned when I got to the dark field elimination. Look at how the tear is shaped. It's like a little planet. And how its patterns show beautiful structures and patterns. I was, I was hooked and I started to explore more tears underneath my microscope. I felt like a planeteer. So now that we know how to make a tear visible, but it did not explain why it looked like that. When we cry, we often see a drop of water. But it's so much more than that. 
Did you know that there were three types of tears? And that the world's most known tear is the emotional tear. It reacts both to positive and negative emotions, like sadness, happiness, pleasure, or pain. But getting a tear is not that easy. Like most of us know, crying on command is very difficult. So during this project, I had to wait until genuine moments presented themselves. For example, this is a tear that was donated by a friend of mine from sadness, because her dad is really sick, and there was nothing she could do about it. Or the tear of complete frustration from my sister, because her boss does not allow her to work at her full potential. Or the tear of goodbye from a young man who had to leave back to his home country, leaving all his friends behind. Or what about the tear that I got from happiness when I heard that I would be one of the TEDx Amsterdam speakers of this year? <laughs> we all have our own story to share, and there are so many more stories. What about the story of relief when you finally hear your cancer is in remission? Or the tear of happiness when you finally figured out you're pregnant after years of trying? Or what about the tears of sadness and frustration because of the recent devastating terrorist attacks? We all have our own story to share. So how come each tear turns out so differently? Well, let's have a look underneath the microscope. Over here, you can see how the magic happens. This crystallization process normally takes five to 30 minutes, but it's depending on the different variables, such as the humidity and the temperature. But not to forget, your unique physiology. Over here, you can see how the crystals are slowly starting to get their shape and grow into a full crystal. And once it's fully grown, the tear is ready to be imaged. We should share our tears, because tears are stories. And stories connect us on a deeper level. So I hereby invite you to donate your tear today. You can find me downstairs at the lobby, and I will visualize your tear underneath the microscope. So, this is your unique opportunity to turn your tear into art. Because just like ideas were spreading, I believe in tears were shedding. <laughs> Thank you.